I must have command of our army. Damn it, Mr. Hancock, we have a country to defend. This is no time to scramble after rank and honor. I'm the only man here who was qualified to command. I've experience in fighting the English, a, an independent fortune, a talent for leadership, and the oldest friend of John Adams. I do expect that you will do your duty. Mr. Adams? Colonel, you are in mourning. Hmm. From Massachusetts, Mr. Adams, an attack made on one of our sister colonies is an attack made on all of us. I am prepared to raise a thousand men, subsist them at my own expense, and march them myself to the relief of Boston. Well, we may yet have need of your generosity. Not generosity, Mr. Adams. Duty. A natural leader. He's always the tallest man in the room. He's bound to end up leading something. Gentlemen, there is great danger in procrastination. If Congress does not support our army in Boston, that army will disintegrate. Therefore, I propose that a new general be appointed by this Congress. And who do you propose of the Massachusetts delegates should lead this force? There is one man who is splendidly equipped for this high office. A gentleman of independent fortune, great talents, and impeccable character. A gentleman from Virginia, George Washington. Will you, Mr. Washington, accept this supreme command? Though I am truly honored. But I beg that each of you will remember. I do not think myself equal to this command. But if the Congress sees fit to honor me with the command, it will be my humble duty to serve. By your modesty, you show the wisdom of our choice. 